The innovations that I find most exciting right now relate to uh, the area of chemical engineering that I work in, which is um, catalysis and reaction engineering. And if you look at the chemical industry, there's been a trend in recent years. It's just a, it's a very nascent trend at this point. Um, to move away from the very large scale, uh, mega scale chemical complexes, you know, that everybody is so familiar with, to smaller scale, in some case modular type uh, chemical plants. And one of the driving forces for that is that um, uh, sometimes it's easier to bring the, the raw materials, uh, well, the traditional thing has been to bring, collect the raw materials and bring them to the mega scale plants and then process them into downstream chemicals. But uh, for some things like the shale gas resources that are sort of remote or stranded, uh, there's a movement to actually bring the, um, the plant to the resources. So for example, for uh, shale gas, part of the problem with that is when you, um, the gas comes out of the ground, the light ends, like the methane and the C1 hydrocarbons, uh, well, methane and C2 hydrocarbons, uh, they're very difficult to compress and, and transport over long distances through pipelines. So in a sense, it's just easier to, as I said, bring the plant to the uh, raw materials. And usually that means you need to have some kind of modular or portable small scale plant that you can move from location to location. So that's a real exciting trend uh, because it's a whole different way of looking at uh, you know, chemical processing. Um, the downside to that is that usually if you go small, you, know, uh, you lose the economies of scale that you get with the large scale plants. So you can recoup some of that, again, because of the lower transportation costs, but also through uh, uh, developments in the area of what we call process intensification, where you have smaller, more efficient uh, processing units, sometimes combined uh, units like reactors and, uh, and catalysts, uh, you know, where you have the catalyst and maybe a membrane separator combined in the same reactor, rather than having two separate units, one for catalysis and another for separations. So this, to me, is a real exciting uh, development, sort of a whole new paradigm for you know, chemical manufacturing. I think there's a lot of opportunities because I probably heard a lot recently about the food, energy, and water nexus, and chemical engineers are involved in all, all three of those. Uh, you know, um, providing food resources, energy, and water to uh, an expanding global population is going to bring all kinds of uh, challenges together. And chemical engineering has a, has a strong role to play in, in, in all of those. Uh, the area that I'm in in particular is very much energy related and reduction of greenhouse gases, you know, and particularly as it might relate to climate change. And that's, that's very important. That's going to open up, I think, huge opportunities for chemical engineers uh, in, the, in the future. I can't speak for the whole you know, profession, but uh, again, what I've told you is I, I think uh, this whole area of process intensification uh, because it leads to energy efficiencies and, and uh, just general efficiencies in, in processing. Uh, things like distillation columns that you know, used to be the old traditional shell and plate. Now you have uh, you know, units with valves that can be very, very compact. Uh, it's, it's things like that that are you know, starting to really work their way into the uh, you know, mainstream chemical processes. And I think that trend will, will continue. Chemical engineering has been very dynamic, and this is not a recent trend, but uh, you know, over the years, I, I think you see the whole field of chemical engineering expanding. Um, it's, it's really the core for a lot of you know, the, the bioengineering that's, that's being done. Uh, also materials, a huge, huge growth in the materials aspects of uh, chemical en engineering, because a lot of processes, and like in my area of catalysis, a lot of the advances are being made in new catalytic materials. Uh, so you see this ex 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 expansion of the, the field. So it's not as narrow as it uh, once was. You know. And that will continue. That will certainly uh, continue. I just want to add that I think it's, uh, you know, for young people starting out, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great uh, area of, you know, um, of study and, and profession to get into. 
And what, I, what we've always liked you know, in chemical engineering is that chemical engineers are viewed as problem solvers. You get rooted in a, at a strong undergraduate education and, and you know, includes a lot of basic science and engineering that can be utilized in a broad range of, of areas. So my advice to young students was, would, uh, you know, don't specialize too soon. Go ahead and get that chemical engineering degree and then go into, you know, some bio, bio aspect or materials aspect or, or something if you, or, you know, computational aspects of, uh, you know, if, if you want, you know, farther down the, down the road. But get that core education in, in chemical engineering.